Hi Gators! I hope you guys are doing amazing and enjoying this time with your families. In the last couple lessons, we've been examining perimeter, which is how to find the distance around the outside of a shape. And first we learned that we could use unit squares to help us count our way around. But then we took it even further. We said, what if we had to measure or what if we already knew those side lengths? We could just add the side lengths together, correct? And then in our third lesson, we pushed the envelope in our understanding of perimeter by trying to find missing sides using a perimeter that we already knew. So we had to serve as detectives searching for that missing side, right? Today, we're gonna take a little bit of a shift. We're gonna move on to area. Area is another way that we measure shapes. So when we measure area, we understand that area is a measure of the inside of a shape or figure. So just as perimeter was that outside, area is that inside. And a good way to try to remember this is a lot of times you'll have your parents say, you stay right in this area, which might say right in this spot, the inside of this shape, right? The inside of this room maybe. Versus perimeter, if you ever watch detective shows, a lot of times you'll see the detective say, I'm gonna check the perimeter, which means they're gonna go around the outside of the building and see if it's safe, right? So one way that we're going to use today to find area is those unit squares again. So again, a unit square is a one unit long, one unit wide square used to measure a figure. And I've broken up this shape right here, this square, into unit squares. So you can see, I already numbered them, but a lot of times they'll be empty at first. You're going to have these empty squares, just like when we had perimeter, to help you solve. And how we can use them to solve area is by just counting how many squares it takes to fill that shape. So I counted them here. I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you already know that the area of the shape is 16. Now, when we talk units for area, we call it not just centimeters. If I told you these were one centimeter long, we don't just write centimeter. We write square centimeters because it's important to remember that we're measuring these unit squares. Another way that you might see this written is as 16 centimeters squared, which means it has a little two in that upper right hand corner. And I'll give you a second to check that out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and dive right into some example problems. If you didn't understand what I'm talking about, hopefully you'll catch on with me as we practice, or if you wanna go back and watch the video, you're always welcome to do that too. Remember, this is a great time to pull out that scratch piece of paper and a pencil and work along with me. Please pause the video so that you can work at the pace that is right for you. All right, my friends? So I'm gonna go ahead and open up to our first example problem. So this is our shape that we're going to start with. So if you wanna take a moment and pause, this is a great moment to pause and draw this shape. All right, Gators. So I've already told you that these are square units in centimeters, right? And I've already written in our units for us. So we're gonna see it both ways. Now, I'm just gonna practice the strategy I've talked to you about already, which is just counting those squares inside of that shape. So you can start wherever you want. It helps me to write the numbers in the squares so that I know what squares I've already counted. So I'm just gonna start here with one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna go to the next column five, six, next column, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. So I now know how many squares it takes to fill up the inside of this shape. The area or the measurement inside this shape is 11 square centimeters or 11 centimeters squared, right? All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next problem. So it, it looks like this, we have a rectangle. All right. So again, I'm just gonna use our numbering strategy, except this time I challenge you to think about this more like an array. So we have two rows here. If I know how many is in the first row, I can just double it to figure out the second row. So let's see if that works. One two, three, four, five. If I know I have five in this row, I know I have five in this row. And five plus five, or five times two, would be 10. 
So I know that the area for this shape is 10 square inches, because this time, if you caught it, my measurement is a little different, my units are different, or 10 units squared. Either way, we're saying the same thing. It takes 10 unit squares in inches to fill up the inside of this shape. All right, now, I'm about to blow your mind with how this connects to multiplication and how you can make this a little bit easier on yourself. All right, so, so far we've been looking at this as just counting those squares or even adding up squares in the rows, right? Here's another rectangle, it's very similar. The measurement this time is also in inches for those unit squares. And first I'm gonna solve the way we've been solving, except I'm gonna break this down into columns. I could also do the rows like I did before, but I wanna show you that it works either way. All right, my friends? So I know that in each column, I have how many squares? Two, right? So when I add these squares together, I'm gonna to have two in this column, plus the 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 two in this column. A lot of twos. So you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six groups of two. Does this remind you of anything, Gators? It reminds me of an array because I know that I have two on this side and I have six on this side. And I can multiply those sides to find out how many squares or manipulatives or circles I have inside. They're just equal groups. So. To make this simpler on myself, instead of adding all those twos, I could just say, I'm gonna do two times six. Because it's the same problem. Repeated addition is multiplication, right? This is a shorter way of writing it. So when I have two times six, I can either double my six or I can count by twos six times. So I'm gonna count by twos this time. If you feel like adding your sixes is easier for you, go ahead and do that. Two, four, six, eight, 10, and that one more would be 12. So my area for this shape would be 12 inches squared or 12 square inches. All right, Gators? This one I really want you to try independently. So once I show you the shape, please pause the video and try it on your own before you come back to see how I solved it. All right, friends? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start. If you're not ready, please pause the video. Here I have another rectangle. I see that I have three on this side because I have one, two, three, and I have two on this side. So I already know that there are three groups of two or two groups of three if I look at the columns. And I can use that to solve using multiplication without taking the time to count all those squares. And this is really gonna help as those shapes get bigger because they're gonna show you some pretty big shapes at the end of today's lesson. So I'm gonna put in my three here and my two here, and I can count by twos or I can double that three. So two, four, six. So my area would be six in my units. If you noted, we always look at our units, we're centimeters. So I end up with the area is six centimeters squared or six square centimeters. All right, friends, I have a question for you. What does this model remind you of? We've already talked about it, but I want you to turn and talk to somebody in your household. So take a moment, pause this video, find mom or dad, brother or sister, grandma, grandpa. If you can't find somebody, record it and send it to Seesaw. I want you to try to explain how multiplication ties into this model. Why does multiplication work? All right, friends? And I'm gonna go ahead to the next problem. Right. This is our last problem for today. And it's a pretty big shape, which again is why we like to practice learning how multiplication ties in. Because counting all these squares would take me a lot more time than if I just counted my sides. Regardless, I'm gonna count just a little bit to figure out what that repeated addition sentence would look like. So either I could count my columns or I could count my rows. 
So to count my rows, there are only four rows. So I would start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten unit squares in each row. So I would write ten plus ten plus ten plus ten. Now, if you decided to count the columns, you're right too. It's just gonna look a little different. So in my columns, I have one, two, three, four, right? And I'm gonna have 10 groups of them. So on my 10 lines, I'm gonna write four plus 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 four. So when I write that as a multiplication sentence, I'm looking at this side is four, and this side here is 10. So I can write that two ways. You could either write 10 times four for those 10 groups, those four groups of 10, excuse me, or you could write four times 10 for the 10 groups of four. Either way, we should get the same answer. So if I count 10 four times, 10, 20, 30, 40, my answer is gonna be 40. And I didn't give you units here, so you would just write units squared or square units, all right? And if I counted by four 10 times, I would also find that I have 40 square units or unit squared, all right? So I have another question for you today before I end this lesson. This one you don't have to record, but again, it's a great idea to turn and talk to somebody about this. This, the, the excuse me, the reason we can swap it, that's a property. It has a very specific name. And if you can remember that property, like kudos and bonus, bonus points to you. So this property says that either way we move a multiplication sentence, whether we say four times 10 or 10 times four, we're going to get the same answer. So I want you to take a second and try to remember what that property is called. All right, Gators? So it's called commutative property. And that's what we're really seeing here. So some of you might have solved it this way, some of you might have solved it this way, some of you might have solved it this way. Either way, we should all end up with the same answer, which is 40 units squared. All right, Gators, that's all I have for you today. Good luck with the workbook page and let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day, Gators, bye.